between your guitars, you're, you're saying you're a slate guy. Do you have the bundle, like the, I do. the subscription? Uh, no, I don't have the subscription because okay. I kind of went to town on a Black Friday once, way before you did the subscription. Oh, uh, okay. So you know, I you was... can sell all of those. I, I sold them on, I had um, VMR yep. and uh, VBC, okay. virtual bus compressor. Yep. And I sold them both on Reverb for 100 bucks each US. Yeah. And that just paid for like a year of the subscription. The thing was, listen, I know you're gonna say you don't like the idea of subscription because everyone else does. Everything is subscription, but. Everyone, but they just keep coming out with I more know, stuff. I and know. so anyone who's saying, oh, I'm just gonna buy what I need, yeah. they just keep coming out with more. Because yeah. they have a S gear that. I know, he has added stuff since. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that I've really, that I'm dying for. That you haven't tried. That I haven't tried. Well, I've, I've, I did demo, so when he gave okay. it to me, because I should have reverb that it comes with. Yeah. It's probably the, one of the best sounding digital reverbs like in the box reverbs I've ever heard. I was like so impressed yeah, with it. Yeah, it's really cool. I know, it's tough. 20, 25 bucks US a month. It's a um, lot. It's not nothing. But, you know, when they keep coming out with stuff, and yeah. for me, I think it's kind of like going like you, with UAD. It's like right. when you go that route, you stick to it, you commit to it. So... Anyway, it's it, here's the thing about Slate. We've actually haven't talked about Slate on any of these. Um, although I know Sean, he uses Slate. I He's think. got the Slate. So. Um, but uh, and a lot of people have at least one thing. A lot of people have Trigger. Um, but for me, I, I what I like about Slate is that the whole culture around it is a lot of fun. I like right. I like kind of it reminds me of the Apple days back in like the early days of Apple, where um, or not I should say like the. the early of the second wave of Apple, right. where it's like, what are they gonna come up with next? And that's what I like about Slate, is that he's yeah. emulating different things, and there's there's just a bit of a culture, and I just think it's fun. I don't see a computer here, what are you running? It is a MacBook, or, no, what is that? Mac Mini? Mac Mini. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's how much I care. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's silent, I can't even hear it. It's silent, it. it's actually in the back of the rack. Oh, okay, cool. And and what is this? Is this a TV screen? Yeah, it's just a standard TV screen, so like a forty-inch screen. It looks great. It's really big, and you're you're a bit far from it too. Yeah, I don't. I know it is pretty close. What do you think? How you, does it work? I, I love it um, because I can sit a little further away, but I kind of get everything nice and big on the screen. And I, what I like is not have to move too much when I'm editing or I'm recording. It's where I can kind of get a big picture of everything. Right. Yeah, and I don't really have to worry about kind of zooming in or getting lost. Yeah. Um, so that uh, is, yeah, it's really nice. No, sense. it's cool. You have an MT500 series. I do. I know you're probably <laughs> self-conscious about that, but there was one we just saw last night, another MT500 series. To me, it's like, a, I don't have a 500 series, but I would buy the rack first, and then I would just sit there and dream. So the rack, Well, that was exactly it. The rack was on sale. Yeah. And you knew you were going to do it. And you yep. know you're going to yeah, do it. Um, it was just a matter of time. So, uh, yeah, I, I grabbed it. Sorry, the racks are not cheap. That's the thing, right? They're not cheap. It's like half the price of um, a, these were yeah. like These were getting cleared out, and uh, I grabbed one. What is this? Never heard these of it These are Aphex, which they do like the oral, original oral exciter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what's great about this one, actually, is that it has its own monitoring... Um, and it, it's actually, you can plug in USB. So it is it um, an interface? Yeah, so it's an interface. So you could actually, well, the reason I really like this one, I got super cheap, but I thought, well, with my laptop, if I want to go and do a field recording or whatever, do a pre-production, I can just lift Without up the box that. and just walk away, and I've got four inputs and a monitoring section. No way. And they don't make them anymore? I, th I don't think they do. I think that was kind of like the end of the line. To me, this is genius, and I wish I could get one because... It's like what we're doing here. I've got to rip out my rack mount interface and, you, and that's what to I used record to do, for yeah. two lapel mics. Yeah, totally. And this would just be a dream. So, what do you want to put in there one day? I believe, I believe it's always changing, right? Yeah, like, of course. There's so much good stuff out there, yeah. and that's why I've been somewhat hesitant. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a 512C. Yeah. I think I'm going to start yeah. with 512C. I would do the same yeah. for the price. You can't beat it. Yeah. Um, and then. Probably the Neve. I can't remember the model. If it's the five seventeen or whatever their eleven, their eleven or ten seventy three version of it. And the Neve In, one or, or BAE. the BAE. Yeah. I know, and that's a tough one too. Um, well, I have a BAE, and the studio we out a couple nights ago have the um, lunchbox, uh, like the DMP. Yep. Um, and Mike here has four five hundred series BAEs, yeah. but. So there, I'm just saying. I'm I know, and, and it's, <laughs> it's one of those things where, and it kind of goes against everything we've just been talking about, but there's something about the Neve, like for me, 
The, I think it's like a hundred dollars in price. So the the t the ten seventy threes were the first preamps that I in the first two that I ever got my job right. in. That's that's what we mm -hmm. had. Uh, and I just absolutely love the sound, and there's just something about that Neve name that I do love. Right. Uh, that being said, I I've heard that the bees are like identical, so I'm sure right. when push comes to shove, I'll probably just grab the whatever. But oh. It seems like everyone's doing 500 series. You know the 500 series that have me really interested is the JHS ones, the guitar pedals. Have you seen those? Yeah. They're, um, it's JHS, right? J yeah. the, the guitar pedal yep. company. And they've just come out with a series of 500 series for studio use. They have their color box, which is a um, pretty much just like a Neve. I think it uses a right. lot of the Neve components. Um, but it has a few other like drive and saturation right. elements. But then there's... Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll overdub what once I find out. But I think there's a there's like a a, a, a fuzz option that they have. There's a delay. I think uh, they have a compressor, but it's all in the same colors. It match. It's basically their pedals right. turned into 500 series. Cool. But it looks really cool. I love the idea of the 500. What's great is that they've opened it up to to kind of everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of. I, I feel like it's also allowed for. A lot of guys that are making gear kind of in their houses yeah. to make this amazing gear, again, at, at prices that are not astronomical. Mm -hmm. And they're able to make stuff that sounds amazing. Like you got, uh, I'm a huge fan of the warm audio stuff. And I, yeah, you know, Bryce, too. like the stuff he mm -hmm. does, is just like, if for the price that he's giving it at, it's like, you're getting an amazing piece of gear. Yeah. And what I love is that he's showing you that like, it doesn't have to be, Two thousand dollars yeah. to be amazing, mm -hmm. um, because his stuff sounds just as good as as the stuff that he's emulating. A lot of people say that, yeah. I mean, I have the EQP, yep. and, and uh, I love. It. I don't own a Poltex, so I yeah. couldn't tell you, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I love it, and a lot of people are saying that. I think, from a business standpoint, I th he's it says on his website yeah. how they're able to get the prices, yeah. and it's basically, it has to do with the fact that more because of digital and because of not every studio needing a board and needing a tape machine, is that more people are buying outboard gear than right. they were in the right. 70s and 80s, right. and because there's attic studios like ours, right. you know, and so there's more people buying it, so they do it in more. Um, Higher demand, higher quantities, so that that can bring the price down than what the old guys were doing it. Um, plus, it's a small operation; yeah. it's like one or two guys. And back in the day, I mean, studios they didn't necessarily have a lot of outboard gear. Like you generally mm. went to the studio, like bigger studios, for the board. I mean, they would have some stuff. Right. But you even look at some some of the big mixers, and there are guys where they just mix on their like their SSL, and then they maybe they have a delay and a reverb, right. and maybe a couple eleven seventy sixes. Right. You know, but a lot of it is done on the board. And I, so I can see where you come from. So like the outboard gear, because the, the great thing about Pro Tools is you, got, you can do all the hardware inserts. So with, with the outboard gear, it's great because you can get out and then back in really yeah. easily. So I can see that, especially with the 500 series stuff, just because it's all right there. It's super simple. The warm audio, this, was your, this is what we're talking about now. And this was your way of getting into the 1176? Yeah. When these came out, I was like, I have to get one. Um, We've seen them. Did they have, they have one at Boxcar, right? The one they have at Boxcar, they have because I told them to buy it. Oh, really? That's <laughs> so, funny. So uh, we that, saw one at Schoolhouse too, right. and and they have, I mean, they have tons. They have a, a Teletronics LA two A, and then they have a Warm yep. Audio eleven seventy six. Yeah, and and Warm actually just made their version yeah, of the LA LA two A. Yeah, for the price, it's just such an amazing yeah. uh, piece of gear. And I've done comparisons with the plugins and and the hardware, and it sounds. It sounds amazing. Like, it sounds really good. You see them in, in a, a ton of studios. I mean, yeah. we've seen them in probably three or, I think, three of the five places yeah. we've, we visited. So Yeah, I use it on That's almost cool. everything. That's when great. We're doing vocals or guitars. Well, listen, we're out of time. I wanted to talk a bit about the room, um, <laughs> but we're, we're going to come back, and this was a we'll lot of fun. Part two.